work with people who will come in and they'll say things like, I've never been sexually abused. I've never been raped. Yeah. I've never been sexually harassed at work, but I am so uncomfortable with sexuality and I don't understand yeah. why. You know, I, I don't like to be sexual. It makes me uncomfortable. I feel like I feel like I've been sexually abused, but I don't have anything to point to and say this thing happened. I don't think that people understand the ways that um, covert trauma can be traumatizing. I think there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of people who may experience um, these types of traumas who feel the impacts of it, but they don't have the language or they don't have the um, they don't have the vocabulary to explain why mm -hmm. they're feeling this way, especially because there is so much information about there, mm -hmm. thankfully, about overt sexual trauma. No one's trauma is less important or more important. We are right. everyone's trauma is valid, and that is yeah. honestly the whole. The what if any if someone gets anything out of this article is that if you've experienced any of these things, your trauma is valid, and it's okay to mm -hmm. go to a therapist and talk about it. It's okay to yeah. unpack that stuff. Um, it's it's all valid. are situations that happen that are, are a little bit more insidious that are valid forms of sexual trauma and have the ability to traumatize a person. And these are some of the situations that I go into in the article that slut shaming, um, it can be victim blaming. Um, I, I love your definition and I, I would add to it that, you know, there, there are kind of, you know, different ways to think about covert and overt. Um, an overt trauma, whether it's sexual or physical, sometimes can be used to describe contact-based offenses, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it would be helpful to think about it that way. But also sometimes things that happen without any contact can be very overt, like sexual harassment at work or something like that. So yeah. it's not always a clear line whether there's contact or no contact. Um, but overt, you know, seems to be the things that people are more aware of and can point to like a big T trauma, right? Something like this thing happened in my life and I can definitively say that it was impactful, right? Yeah. I think about a covert trauma is more like a little T trauma. So it's something yeah. that, you know, someone might've felt uncomfortable around, but they don't necessarily look back and say that one thing in my life that happened was so pivotal. It was impactful in all these ways, but you know, sometimes it, they happen kind of a lot and they're little impact at the time, but the cumulative effect can be really big. I think I've heard people describe as like death by a thousand pokes. There's like all yes. these little traumas that have it happened is, to it you. Is. So yeah. let's say, let's talk a little bit more about what might constitute a covert sexual trauma, whether, <laughs> regardless of your gender, I think some of the things to look at are, are you sexualized frequently by people in your lives? Um, yeah. Whether you're sexualized in a way that kind of elevates your standing or denigrates your standing. Are you sexually objectified frequently? Whenever we objectify someone based on their sexual appearance, their sexual willingness or unwillingness, things of that nature, those could be considered covert traumas, right? Shaming someone because of how they choose to dress shaming right. someone for how they choose to walk, talk, the kinds of sexual practices that they like to participate in, all of that could be considered sexual shaming, right? right. Um, shaming someone for masturbating when they're young. A lot of children are just shamed away all day long about sexuality, but humans are sexual creatures. So yeah. that that kind of experience, you know, growing up in a family where what is a very natural behavior, now you're being told you're bad, you're wrong, you're sinful, you're shameful. That's a kind of covert sexual trauma. On the other end of that, being, being sexualized by a parent, like uh, having, um, if, if you are a, a young girl that maybe has, has developed breasts, having, ha hearing things like, oh, the boys are going to be all over you when you're older. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very, um, I don't think when you're when you're young, you know how to process that information, right. and I think it becomes um, it's like. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe it comes an identifier, and I that mm -hmm. you are now taught to identify yourself with your sexuality, right? And these messages become internalized too, and I think that those are really 
those are really hard messages to unlearn, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's another thing that I hope that um, this article can help someone with is that even if these messages were something that you learned growing up, or if you have if you have been victim blamed for 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 um, an assault, whether it was covert or overt, that um, you're not at fault for for what happened, and that those were those were untrue and unfair messages that were placed upon you that you shouldn't have had to hear. You know, when we have those kinds of experiences, we develop a, a, a hypervigilance to anything that reminds us of that. And so it can really keep people disconnected from their bodies or from a feeling of safety in their sexuality. And that can be the real insidious knocker of all of this, is that Absolutely. people get really disembodied. So a, a lot of the a lot of the symptoms honestly are similar, if not identical, to symptoms that one will experience with overt trauma. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the one of the ones that maybe is a little bit more um, harder to understand or to acknowledge is what you're just talking about is feeling disembodied sexually or um, dissociating or disconnecting from mm -hmm. your from your sexual self or um, when you're having sex, if it always feels performative, if it feels like you are just trying to placate the other person, if it feels like you just are not an autonomous sexual being, I feel like that's something that I think is less talked about when it comes to um, covert sexual um, sexual trauma, because if you think about it, you have kind of been, that, that autonomy feels like it's been taken away from you, because other people have placed their own um ideas or thoughts or or pre um or yeah ideas or thoughts on you and mm -hmm. if when you're young I, I think those messages get internalized as as well they know better I don't I, I guess I I can't see myself as a sexual being I guess that mm -hmm. um that I can't be sexual or I have to be sexual in a way that is approved and it just really strips somebody of their of of their own view of them of their sexual self yeah. and on top of that um like i said you can experience um general symptoms of of ptsd or post-traumatic mm -hmm. stress disorder and some of those are um sleep disturbances either sleeping too much or not sleeping at all or having nightmares that disrupt your sleep um they some other symptoms can be shame like having mm -hmm. um shame or a a lack of of self-worth um it can be you can uh it can bring up feelings of embarrassment um one of the things too is i think just general invalidation kind of what we were talking about earlier i mean that's kind of a symptom of trauma in general i think there's it's not uncommon for survivors of trauma to invalidate their experience um mm -hmm. i think that's sometimes a way that survivors cope they want to believe it wasn't that bad they want to in, in a weird way um i mean I, i've heard that sometimes the reason why um survivors will downplay their experience is because they they need to tell themselves it wasn't that bad it's a coping it's, it's a way for them to cope it's a way for them to process what they've experienced mm -hmm. and that was something that i learned was a a symptom mm -hmm. everyone's experience is valid and everybody's you no know, big or small big e trauma little t trauma it's all it's all valid trauma is subjective so yeah. walking down the street two people stub their toe for one person they don't skip a beat mm -hmm. for another person it might actually send them into a, a pretty painful spiral, right? Yeah. Physically or emotionally. And that's really the thing that we want to hone in on here is that covert sexual trauma is really challenging sometimes to pinpoint, but also people don't take it seriously and they don't necessarily tie it to their own pain because it doesn't feel like there's an overt situation that's happened. And so, you know, if, if you're somebody who struggles at all with, um, you know, feeling sexually embodied, feeling sexually safe, and you also can't pinpoint one reason why, you know, I wonder if it might be time to kind of think about if there might have been some other covert wounds that have happened, and can you make space for your own experience of pain? Give yourself permission to, to feel your feelings, to, to, um, to acknowledge what you've been through, to you know, forgive yourself for the ways you cope to, to, um, 
unpack of the ways that you have that you have been victimized and um, to feel embodied, to feel autonomous at, at the end of the day. That's the goal.